For the love of God, Tagashi, well, shit just hit the fan already! Up, Whitey Nerdigans, this is the one and only Packer Girl 89 and today's Manga Nerdigan live reaction video is going to be for Hunter Hunter Chapter 389. Now, I don't have a Karapika plushie. I know, I need to order one already, but I just got this cute little Narancia plushie from Japan yesterday and he's just too cute! So I figured since I don't have a Hunter Hunter plushie, I, I should just use my, my sweet, my sweet little Narancia. Cause look how cute he is! He's just, he's just too, he's just too cute for, and pure for this world. My God. Anyway, um, last chapter of Hunter x Hunter, uh, we got to see how everything is going according to Karapika's plan. And to an extent, um, I got to do a book live reaction, uh, last chapter. And it was kind of nice cause I got to, Use my imagination and visualize shit, which is kind of cool. And that's why I love reading books more than book to expect. I forgot that feeling of imagination uh, that, that I, I would get in books compared to manga. But, uh, but Tagashi, bro, I am losing my patience, man. I want to see some Ahsoka. I want to see some spiders causing shenanigans. Oh, I, love, I love this content! Don't get me wrong! I know! I know it's gonna pay off! I really, really know it's gonna pay off! But my god! I just want to get to the shit hitting the fan already! My fucking god! It's driving me nuts! But anyway, last chapter ended with the rumble. Let's get to chapter 389 and see if, what the explanation of the rumbling is. So here we go. And chapter 389 is titled Curse. The moment of the gunfire. At the time Chicago committed suicide, I was in the Seventh Prince's sleeping chambers. There were five people there apart from myself. Seventh Prince uh, Luz Luzerus himself uh, berate from uh, his um, prince private... Wait. From, uh, from his private guard, Ridge and Basho from the Hunter Association, and the Second Queen's uh, soldier, uh, Famul, for a total of six people. Luzerus was smoking legal drugs while watching a movie as usual. I love that <laughs> legal is in parentheses. That's kind of funny. You gotta wonder, was he smoking weed? Was he smoking cocaine? Well, yes, you could smoke uh, you could smoke some crack cocaine. Was he smoking meth? Was he smoking like a tobacco out of a hookah? Like what was he smoking? Um <laughs> uh up until the gunshot sounded out, we were more concerned about the rumbling, um, and so our attention was not focused on Shikaku in the entryway. The second queen soldier went to check on his window when Shikaku shouted out, Long live for Earth Prince Benjamin! Press the muzzle of the gun to his temple and fired! Judging from the uh, fact that the rumbling at ended at nearly the same time as the sound of the gunshot, uh, we could determine that there is a clear connection between someone's ability in Ninth Prince Halkenberg's camp and Shikaku's suicide. I'm still convinced that it's from Halkenberg himself! That rumbling is from Halkenberg! I'm convinced of this shit! Um... So then looking back at the situation where we knew he killed himself reluctantly, the idea that he was forced to commit suicide as a condition for some kind of bargain uh, that was struck is very likely. Well, duh! Um, so then, are you saying that in exchange for the proverbial gun that was pointed at my head to be lowered, he chose death himself? Duh! If we assume that rumbling was caused by an emitter, the kind of destructive power that would be capable of, um, would be presumably something, uh, the likes of a fireball of five meters in diameter surpassing the speed of sound. What? Fireball of five meters in diameter surpassing the speed of sound. Holy shit. Any non-user, uh, uh, any non-nan user caught by it would be dead on the spot. Woo! Oh, man. Con Congenial, for the most part, I agree do agree with your assessment of the enemy's ability, attack ability, but I have three problems with your theory that he was forced into a suicide, uh, into suicide as, re as a result of a bargain. Three, would you please tell me what they are? The first, assuming that Shikaku had come to the uh, had come to the same conclusion that the rumbling was caused by an emitter preparing his attack, would he really think that Prince um, that Prince Halkenberg was truly ready to make an attack? 
We are here in the um, double VIP area at the heart of the confinement surveillance center. Prince Hockenberg could just have could have discovered the um, this by uh, way of his assassin giving word through the queen. Uh, but if he did not know our position, then to attack here, he would have he would have had to blast straight through some of the lower prince's quarters that were in the way. Um, woo, he would have had to blast through a lot, at least three. Both forcing someone to commit suicide and letting lower princes get caught in the attack greatly go against the Ninth Prince's profile. Even if we had, um, assume he had a sudden uh, change of heart and decided to participate in the succession, succession war, which he did, um, this massive uh, of a change, this suddenly is far too unnatural. Which, it, it is an, an unnatural change, but it happened. Yeah, it's very we, look, remember when we saw Hockenberg go through that change that sudden change of heart it was very unnatural um indeed oh my god scroll down you motherfucker I want to get to more chapter here here we go the second why suicide if you were going to force Shikaku to do something wouldn't um ordering him to assassinate one of the other princes be more beneficial hmm you have a point <laughs> that's a good point and the third, hold on a second, um, can fellow princes actually kill one another in the first place? Excuse me? It is both my and first Benj Prince Sir Benjamin's opinions that if our Nembis could kill one another, or if our Nembis uh, could kill other princes, then this whole ordeal could be resolved quite quickly. But if either or those were um, possible, then there's no way that Sir Benjamin's Nembis, who has, has inherited his own personality and traits, would have not acted on it by now. That's a good point! Like, I didn't think about that. The princes... I, I didn't think about that point up until just now. The princes and Nembis can't attack each other. Ooh! Um, which means that Nembis can, cannot kill one another, and that Nembis cannot directly kill another prince. We can assume that this is a rule built into their very nature. I see. Furthermore, all the princes have acknowledged the fact um, that the absolute law of killing a member of royalty is a capital crime. And that's built into the Nembis, which makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, will apply to them as well. So for a prince, the, the killing of another prince being extremely taboo is embedded deeply in their minds. So it would only be natural that all the prince's Nembis um, also function with the, that restraint lodged into their consciousness. That makes a lot of sense. We know that before boarding the ship, Ninth Prince Hockenberg was unable to use Den, which means that if that rumbling was caused by his Nen Beast and it was targeting the first prince, it would be breaking its core rule, even if, for um, example, the prince's abilities were somehow awakened through the aid of his Nen Beast. Dude, that Nen Beast is so trippy. Um, there's no way a Nen Beast would um, enable the use of an ability that could uh, let, let a prince directly kill another prince. Well, I hadn't really thought it that far. Uh, sorry, well I, hadn't, well, I hadn't really thought it through that far. So then, was Chicago being controlled after all? Even if he were, that still doesn't explain why he specifically committed suicide. Besides, Chicago himself was a manipulator. He would have been able to take countermeasures against a manipulator opponent. In a battle of manipulators, the first to strike wins. When the assassin activates his ability, he would first target himself. Uh, this would defend against any opponent's manipulator attacks. I had no idea about that. Um, it's one of the most core uh, concepts for manipulators. Uh, there are a lot of people that don't know about it. Leah might not uh, have known um, about this either. If so, then I'll have to give up on the idea of placing him on uh, Ninth uh, Prince Hockenberg's guard. But if, if all that's true, why did Chicago commit suicide? The key to that may lie with uh, this one other doubt I have. Why did he die in front of room 1007? His mission should have been uh, one that, that required utmost discretion and attention to detail and secrecy. Remember the conditions at the time um, with as much detail as, as you possibly can. And um, keep an extremely close eye on the actions surrounding Room 1007 as of now. Uh, with these, we will search for the answer to why. So that was the ninth day, Monday at 10 a.m. Tuesday, Tuesday, 1130 a.m., the fourth rumbling. The interval between them is growing shorter. Vic um, Victor, what's going on? Rumble, rumble, click, click. I heard something click twice. Is there an emergency? They're fighting. Well, first ben Prince Benjamin still has the radio on. Rumble, rumble, nig, rumble. It's not working at all, rumble. Swish, damn it, rumble, dash. 
Your Highness, it's no use! Swish, Prince Hockenberg! Swish, swish! Invincible! Rubble, rubble! Attacks have no swish effect! What? Yeah, that's right! It's Prince Hockenberg! Yeah! It's the fourth rubble falls by the Hockenberg! Rubble, what? Swish! Victor's attack uh, attackle shield is both an offensive and defensive ability. Even if he were unable to completely overpower Prince Hockenberg, I believe he'd be more than capable of holding his ground while keeping uh, the enemy's movements and actions under check. It seems Prince Hockenberg is more suited to combat than we expected. On top of that, once he uh, completes preparations for his attack, it's likely to carry enough force that it would be um, impossible to de uh, defend against. So even if we know that it's coming, we can't defend against it, um, avoid it, or even fight back? Uh, this is far beyond the class of, of ability that any individual would be able to master in such a short amount of time. We should look at it as a, um, as a, a bow formed by the, by the entirety of um, uh, his, his private guard. It's exactly as you say. His force and um, efficiency, uh, efficiency are beyond anything we imagine. And he um, has a um, resolve firm and, and uh, fierce enough to give up a life for each and every shot. Chicago has died, but Victor is still alive. And it wasn't through just a simple emitter's attack. There's such a mystery. I need some kind of leap, but I can't afford to waste any more pieces like this. Should I have um, Muse's owl, which is currently attached to Second Prince Kabila, to, uh, attach to um, the private guard instead and search there? That doesn't sound like a good idea. We know even less about Second Prince's Camilla, uh, Prince Camilla's abilities than we do Halkenberg's. Prince Camilla's ability killed um, Muse instantly. Uh, that alone makes it a viable threat. We need to keep her under surveillance. Besides, even if we're able to see the enemy attacking someone, I still have great doubt that we'd be able to determine what exactly her, uh, their ability is. But clearly we're in a state of emergency regarding Prince Hockenberg. Do you have some kind of plan? Please leave it to me. Due to the serial killings currently um, occurring across the lower decks, um, I've had um, any non-local troops be shuffled and redeployed as a countermeasure. Furthermore, my private guard have... Um, continue to observe strange behavior surrounding Prince Hockenberg's camp and have sufficient evidence um, and viable motive to suspect him of pre premeditated murder. With the person personnel uh, chain uh, cut off, split up um, the remaining troops uh, from the one giving them orders? Exactly. If the enemy's ability is powerful, then the best strategy is to not allow to, uh, them to use it. Ooh, here we go. So now we got the special duties people on here. So we got the um, National Naval Regulation Board uh, special duties, uh, Poiselt, uh, Kaken uh, Judicial Branch, um, Criminal Investigation um, Department currently assigned. And then we got the National Naval Regulation Board special duties Section Chief Advisor, Steiner, Kaken Judicial Branch, um, Criminal Investigation Department currently assigned. Ninth Prince Hockenberg has been restrained and confined. He has been isolated from his private guard. And we'll be forbidding uh, contact with them until the trial is over. But uh, with Fico's um, current safety and whereabouts unknown, it's extremely uh, likely that he'll end up getting acquitted due to insufficient evidence and released under surveillance, just like what happened with Second Prince Camilla. The first trial will be uh, where the battles fought. Yes, this may be our once-in-a-lifetime chance to get him out, for, uh, out of the way for good. It's time to swap um, shifts, Giuliano. Okay. You're still reading that? Haven't you finished that? Finished it already? Yep. It's got so many famous song lyrics in it. Once I start reading them, I can, just can't stop. A song is really the best way to convey a message. Once it's in your head, it stays there, playing back along with the melody. Although the, um, this does have uh, propaganda-like points, they all make sense. Um, and more importantly, the concept for each chapter, along with its song selection, is, is so carefully done. It's really interesting. I feel like I kind of under I underestimated Six Prince uh, Tython. I need to reflect on that. The final chapter, what a wonderful world, really gutted me. Um, suddenly, I find myself wanting to make um, Prince Tython king, but in order to do that, the other princes would have to be. Ah, uh, but that would compl be completely contrary to P Prince Tython's ideal uh, ideals. When I consider that, um, then I realize that these teachings may be the prince's last will and testament. An excess of empathy is dangerous, Julia. I know, I know that. You should read this too, Izu. Do you think a life has ever been um, saved by oversensitive love? Don't come at me with your sock quotes. 
As a member of the Hunters Association, our mission is uh, to protect the princes until we reach the supposed new continent. As far as you're concerned, that's when the real problem starts, right? Well, I suppose you could say that. I can imagine what kind of tragedy will play out afterwards, but with our contract over at that point, can we just say good work with you and leave just like that? I'm not very confident about that myself. All right, see you later. Surprise! Happy birthday, Juliana! Uh, my birthday still isn't for a long time. I know that. That's why it's a surprise, right? After all, by this day, uh, two months from now, we'll already have said our far farewells, right? Oh, you're so lucky. You get to eat a, a cake handmade by the prince. Oh, they're singing happy birthday to him. I'm so glad we met. Oh, what are you crying for, Julie? Come on, smile. That's an order. Oh, uh, yes, your highness. This is at room 1006, and now I want cake. I want that cake! That cake looks yummy. And though the amount of sugar and flour might be off, uh, might be off by a bit, I'm also ordering you to say it's delicious. Got it? Uh, your highness. Okay, now I don't want that cake. Uh, I, I'm scared of that cake. Meanwhile, I'm in 1007. Long live Prince Benjamin! Bang! From that, apart from that, nothing else ha really happened. But here at 1007, um, I haven't the faintest clue. Was there anything out of the ordinary immediately following the, the gunshot? Not particularly. After all, it, was, it wasn't like anyone uh, um, had gotten uh, shot and it happened outside the room. It's a waste of time asking. I'm an honest guy, so I'll tell you straight out. We're not telling you nothing. As I thought, nobody's going to go out of their way to offer their, up their information. And there's no guarantee that uh, whatever information they do have is worth offering in the first place. If there was some meaning behind Shikaku killing himself in front of uh, room 1007, the only thing I could think of is a diversionary plan to get um, everyone from the inside uh, focused on what's happening outside the room and fulfill the objective within that opening. In that situation, the most likely would be a plan through Second Queen Dazul's officer. Prince Hockenberg used Queen Azul's officer in uh, room 1007 to do something during the ensuing commotion and chaos of the suicide, but what was it? If they were going to go through this much effort for so something such a large scale, um, it wouldn't be worth it unless their objective was assassinating 7th Prince uh, Lazarus, right? At that time, not counting Satobi, there were five of uh, Queen Azul's family guards in room 1007. There's Bamul, Reese, Gatto, Hapich, and Odessa there. So immediately following the a gunshot, Famul was in my field of view. Hapich and Reese were on guard duty in, in the living room. Odessa and Gatto were asleep in the break room. Um, if someone there, if someone were going to try um, something, it would be uh, those two in the break room. In the break room, private guard uh, Macne and Skult from the Hunter Association were also sleeping. Perhaps Odessa and Gatto took advantage of the commotion and did something um, to one of those two. Oh my god! Jesus Christ! Oh, it's Akashi! Why is it with all this fucking dialogue? Oh god, you're killing me! Oh, this is a book live reaction, ladies and gentlemen! We have gone from manga live reaction to book live reaction! Hold on a second, I'm gonna need a drink for this one. Oh. Alright. I conclude that all six of Queen Dazul's officers in room 1007 were not Nen users, but I can't conclude to the same degree that um, Fryoko can with a certain amount of skill. It would be possible to pose as a non-Nen user and fool me. If that's so, then if I were to question the four people that were asleep, they may find out that I've realized that possibility. Keeping a close eye on them while watching over everything else is, pro is probably best. If my theory is right, then it's probably um, Macnae has been manipulated into assassinating Prince uh, Lazarus, which is perfectly fine for us, so we have no reason to interfere. Oh my god. Um, Macanay is assigned to guard Prince Lizarus this afternoon. Um, that would be when he would, um, act if they're trying to finish this quickly. But it doesn't really look like that's going to happen from my point of view. With the hunter Skult sleeping right nearby, I think it would be hard for anything to be pulled off. <sighs> But if we're trying to investigate into the actions inside room 1007, wouldn't it be better to pour all of our effort into getting rid of Prince Halkenberg? If he places himself in the judicial branch's proceedings and starts acting clean and proper, there's no way he's going to end up with the guilty verdict. Unless it's a matter of national danger, uh, the military doesn't interfere with judicial matters. But with the first prince's authority and influence depending on his explanation, it's more than possible to get a court mandate in his favor. Man, de man democracies are strict. I applaud the prince of 
captain for having so much self-restraint to keep up with the formalities. If it were me, well, I, I'm the type to pull the trigger now and think of an excuse uh, later. Regardless, someone with that kind of personality wouldn't survive in the succession war anyway. Help me in investigating people's behaviors at the incident, um, at the time of the incident. Oh my god, I actually am getting through this. Oh gosh. Actually, I've considered the possibility of Queen uh, Dazan's officers planning something. Their, their ships are currently being adjusted. Um, McNay and, Sk and Skult will be placed under surveillance as persons of interest. So you had the same idea? But... Seventh Prince Lazarus was opposed to that opinion. Queen Dazul's posse has life. Uh, Queen Dazul's posse and life is in action. Her standpoint is uh, to not give help to any prince, regardless who asks for it. It's not like someone's uh, not going to take action right in front of the face of danger, though. If they've um, if they've been pretending that they were uh, unable to use Nen this whole time, then that means the both of them must be considerably skilled. Um, be on your guard, right? Or so you like me to think. I think, oh my god, the dialogue just doesn't fucking end! Oh my god, I'm sorry, the narration just doesn't fucking end! Oh my god, Takashi, you're killing me! Ah, uh, I think all of you and Prince Benjamin's private guard are behind this. You're all in on it! And if, yeah, you're all in on this fucking long ass dialogue! You're all in this fucking long ass inner monologue, you bastards! Prince Benjamin's guard! You're all, you're all in on it. An ability that Shikaku activated by taking his own life. What? With that kind of resolve, using a Nen that increases in strength after death would have quite the considerable amount of power indeed. If I assume committing suicide in front of room 1007 was done in an effort to mislead the investigation, the Prince Hockenberg was framed for the crime, and in reality, they're going after the second, third, or fourth prince. The structure of his organization feels no remorse at using his officers' lives as ammo after all, so it would be peculiar in, uh, in the least for there to be many among them with post-mortem Nen. The most popular kind of post-mortem Nen is the kind- Oh my god, is the kind that haunts the target after death, causing all manner of harm and ill fortune to befall the haunted. But with these entrusted cursed- ah! I said to death to gosh! to him be able to be haunted by yet another entity or well, either way for now my option is to observe that's a good question would they be able to be haunted by a, by a curse then oh my god that's a good question so now here we are the double vip second prince cabela's surveillance quarters no i'm gonna hurry up and die already from the day I learned exactly why I was born, every day without fail I've come to see you, so that um, we can be bound together in hell. I swear I will curse you to death, so that Prince Camilla can become king and prosper. Um, Second Prince Camilla's private guard, uh, Mos Moswana, in charge of First Prince Benjamin. Oh my god, here we go, we got even- Oh god, we got even more in her monologue! Oh my god! Oh, let's do this. In ancient kingdoms, there were many funeral and entombing uh, tradi traditions which involved people giving up their lives to be buried alongside another. In ancient Kaken, there was a specific tradition in this style known as the afterlife companion. The afterlife companion was reserved for after a prince who was unable to become king had died to watch over the prince in the afterlife and ensure they would not become a vengeful ghost and haunt uh, the king and the country. A member of the opposite sex was selected to be buried and entombed with the prince. This is some sick, twisted shit! Though, it was supposed to be, um, supposedly an honor to be the prince's companion. In actuality, it was quite the opposite. In a class system where you were born into a class, and of that class, for your entire life, the companion forcefully chosen from uh, the lowest tier of the untouchables. The afterlife companion is now obsolete and unused, but those born as untouchables are still forever locked into that class and will never be able to take a public office, rise to a higher level official, or join the military. But Camilla gave all of these untouchables a chance to join her private guard. They received their own private land and, and, and a special ward and granted the same status as, and, fel, and rights as fellow soldiers. 
along with the um, overwhelming support that um, these once discriminated people hold for Camilla amongst her private guard, um, there naturally began a call um, began calls for the afterlife companion system to be reinstated. This fused uh, with men powers and transformed into an incredibly potent assassination curse. Oh my God, Takashi, I see what you're doing here with this curse. Woo! So we got second put. Um, Princess Private Guard, um, uh, back in charge of Zhang Li's curse. That's third Prince Zhang Li. Fourth Prince, uh, Z um, Seridich. Second Princess Private Guard, um, Hignori in charge of Severiditches. Fifth Prince, uh, Zabapa, uh, wait, Tabapa. Second Princess Private Guard as a demi hunter guarding around the residential area. Jidal in charge of Tabepa's curse. Um, sixth Prince, uh, uh, Tython. Second Princess Private Guard, um, uh, Brabana in charge of Tython's curse. Seventh Prince, uh, Lozara, second prince is, uh, private guard, Demi Hunter, um, where's a, um, uh, wait, Risa Mazetta in charge of Lozarus's curse. Ninth Prince Halkenberg, second prince, uh, private guard, Kako in charge of Halkenberg's curse. Tenth Prince, uh, Kacho, second prince is private guard, Demi Hunter Mazube, um, Mazube in charge of Kacho's curse. Eleventh Prince Fugetsu, second prince is private guard, Demi Hunter Misushi in charge of Fugetsu's curse. Thirteenth Prince uh, Mariam, uh, Second Princess Private Guard Tala in charge of Mariam's curse. Carry with you something related to their to your target, their name, photograph, clothing, or part of their bo uh, their body, and curse your target. Stay as close as you can to your target as long as po um, of a period um, as you possibly can. During this time, the greater you desire it, the stronger the curse will grow. When the invoker dies, the ability will be activated. Ideally, you should kill yourself in front of your target's eyes. It is obvious that Shikaku was not um, an untouchable of, Ka of Kaken, but it's possible that he was entrusted um, a curse-type uh, user like us. Prince Hockenberg's private army was made up of people from many countries with most uh, mostly unknown birthplaces. It would uh, not be all that surprising if there were a few among them with circumstances similar to our own. If a curse ever came for Prince Camilla, and this is the second prince private... Uh, Guard Captain uh, Sarahel in charge of 14th Prince Wobble's curse. I would happily uh, give my life in order to remove it from her. Second Prince's private guards, uh, um, Umanama and then Exorcist. That's right. And then the Second Prince's private guard, uh, Nukuna, um, Nukoka, informally in charge of 8th Prince Sail Sail's curse. So then we really don't have to become afterlife, afterlife companions? Second Pr Prince's private guard, uh, Kavich, formerly in charge of uh, 12th Prince's uh, Mimosa curse i mean we're totally ready and willing to it's just um we will use our lives not for the sake of a dead prince but for the future of prince camilla uh we who weren't even considered people were given um uh purpose and will by camilla those who are no longer in charge of a curse go snoop around the enemy's people and figure out if they have a ninth an ninth exorcist or not we who um have the uh, eaten the food of uh, of the dead have gained the special net ability of Cockins Untouchables. Carry a small blade. To oh my God! This is wait. They ain't eating the food of the dead. That what the fuck? That is messed up. Have gained the special ability of uh, Cockins Untouchables. Carry a small blade together with something connected to your target and pray for them to be cursed every day without fail. And I, I see what you're fucking doing with this chapter, Takashi. It's fucked up. Um, then burn the object carried, boil the ashes, and uh, drink. And drink them? What the fuck? This is some fucked up shit! Oh my god! Um, kill, afterwards, kill yourself with the blade and the curse will be invoked. Whatever you do, um, ensure that you do not cause any more trouble for Lady Camilla. Yes, ma'am. Those haunted by the curse Nen uh, will have their auras, sto auras stolen. The most powerful curses will force their the target into a state of Zetsu and then bring death within a few hours. Oh my god! This is so fucked up! Was still so much unknown about. Like, that's a good question. Well, will the Nembies protect the princess from the curse Nen? I'm very curious about this. Was still so much unknown about the princess guardian beast abilities. To send a curse after the upper ring princess would be risking it all in a high gamble with the very high chance of failure. But if it goes well, then we could kill the princess with the curse. Even if it gets exercised, uh, we'll have. Um, been able to lure the Hunters Association's uh, Nen Exorcist out into the open. Should we go for the 10th or 11th Prince? Or maybe the 13th? My Prince the 14th hasn't spent long enough bu uh, building up the curse yet. Call Fukutaki, the head servant here. 
Here I am. Damn, that was fast. Er, I want to send out a curse to one of the princes today, but I want to leave the cursed target alive for a few days to confirm whether or not the Hunter Association has a net exorcist. Out of uh, Mizube, um, uh, Misu Sushi, and Tala, who do you think is the most qualified? If you're going to send the curse from this room, then all three of them would take about three months to kill with their curses. If you were to send it uh, from room 1002, Mizube would take ten days. The other two would take about two weeks. Captain, the 10th and 11th princes have, been, have both been detained in um, the ju judicial department for attempting to es for attempted escape. And according to some of our sources, there are even rumors that someone has died. What? If they died, then the door would be sealed, wouldn't it? Um, if they're in the judicial department, it would take over half a year. So then with that, we're left with Tala um, in charge of the 13th prince taking two weeks. Please wait. My estimates are me um, assuming that the prince is defenseless. Huh? But your target is being protected by a great guardian beast who has protected the glory of the royal family through generations and generations. If you tried to s stealthily send a curse at them from your own territory as if they were some careless, helpless commoner, it would snuff out such an insolent attack with a single glance. Well, at least we're getting that answered. We untouchables have no, um, no such metal or determination in order to compete against such a powerful guardian beast's desire to protect the royalty. If you want to successfully fulfill the killing curse, you'll need the resolve to get close enough to touch the prince's skin directly and to kill yourself while the target stares fixedly at you. Ooh! Why the heck didn't you just say so to begin with? You're a real jerk when you want to be, Granny. Squeezing out wisdom is a strength on par with experience. Um, I apologize for the roundabout discussion earlier, but I've got to teach you right. It's the job of the young to skin their knees and the job of the old to bring the medicine. I like that analogy, actually. That's a good analogy. Before their, um, or a good metaphor, too. Uh, before their eyes, huh? Indeed. Actually, carrying this out is going to be, uh, going to involve considerable, um, difficulty and a lot of resolve. All right, then I'll do it. If I curse the 14th prince, uh, from right, right beside him, even with the short time period spent incubating in him, um, I should still unleash a powerful curse. I know that Prince Camilla hates asking for anything or taking handouts and wanted, uh, nothing to do with the classes, but if, um... If it will lead to our objective of killing a prince with a, with a curse, I'm sure she'll give me permission. The hunter um, in room uh, 1014 is teaching them with the goal of causing a stalemate. If that's true, then there should be a second round of classes, too. When that happens, I'll be going. Being in close means the enemy's fangs can also reach you. Being too openly hostile is extremely dangerous and could wind up getting you killed. You're telling me to steal myself, right? Uh, love us and hate. I'll use my si love and, uh, to silence the sound of my hate. That is my specialty. If you slip and fall while going down this hill, you won't be getting off with just scratches. Ha! You just never run out of your little reminders, do you, Granny? I like Granny! Granny has some really good metaphors! I really like, I like them! But they're all, they're all guiding me to the right path. Don't worry, I'm awake now. Indeed, I may have been pl um, been uh, playing the joking clown of a soldier for a while there, but I am an untouchable. Even if I fail, I have nothing to lose. And thus, as of as of today, everyone who took the course has had their net ability awaken. He was able to carry them to taking uh, their first steps in activating their net abilities by the final day. Hmm, have acquired it yourself. How do you feel? Physically, I feel myself rapidly growing stronger, and the way I see the world has quite literally changed. So, um, then, can you see my guardian beast right now? Yes, it's far more defiant and grander than I ever imagined. Well done. Here, take this for your reward. What is this? It's a coin created by my spirit beast. You'll be the first person to receive the, uh, number one coin. Thank you, I'm so thrilled. Hmm, though I've got the real first number one coin. The number has increased to ten! Ooh, a stallion on down a belly! Oh my god, this chapter was so fucking long, but this chapter, we learned a lot, but I think the thing, I think what I really like the most about this chapter is the untouchables. I really, I, I understand why this chapter is titled Curse was because of the untouchables, and I really like the, the lore for the untouchables. And I like the curse aspect, and I, I, I like it. And it's crazy that they there was this system going around going on in the kingdom for for generations and it was stopped and, and Camilla liberated them. But they still did but in this but you know, even though they're uh, they're soldiers now, um oh god, they're still doing the curses. This is so fucking trippy though with the curses though. Oh my god, like 
but like we did learn about but Grant did point out the shit about um the curse the cursed nen though and what they need to do to t to um in order to uh, affect the royalty um that they have to touch them and have them stare at the eye still look them in the eye but i want but i'm wondering if that would work on like the more powerful ones like halkenberg's or like benjamin's i don't think it would work that easily to be honest i think that uh, i think you have to have a really strong ass desire in order for those curses to work but i'm very curious what you guys thought let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerdigans Inc. If you love what I'm doing and want to contribute to my channel expansion, there's a few ways you could do that. You could donate to my PayPal, Patreon, GoFundMe, purchase something off my Amazon wishlist, all that's in the description box below. Also, make sure you follow me on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and friend me on PlayStation Network, that's in the description box below as well. Till next time, Nerdigans, I will be seeing you later.